Hello, welcome to the new video from City Ink Express. Today we're going to be fitting the continuous ink system on the new Workforce WF7210. Uh, so at the moment this is a, this is a brand new printer, uh, it's straight out of the box. All I've done so far is I've put the setup cartridges in. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take them out. Uh, okay. Bear with me a second, I uh, don't want to register firmware updates. So I'm just basically settings, maintenance, no, don't want that. Ink cartridge replace. cartridges out and now you'll have already uh, filled and primed your continuous ink system you'll have seen our other video and uh, you'll have completed that step already and we also have another video uh, which talks about the chip resetting on this model uh, would be a good idea to watch that one as well so you understand how that works so Taking the continuous ink system, I've already filled it and primed it. We're going to loop the cartridge straight through. Now it must be looped through here. We've had a few customers that have come under the bottom here and then closed the lid down and actually crimped the incline so it restricts all the flow. The cartridge must be looped through this hole here. I'm just going to pop that, pop that in. What I'm going to do now at this moment, I'm just going to uh, close the lid down, or close the, the grey lid. And then what we're going to do is we're going to route the incline over here towards the middle of the printer. So within your accessory pack you'll have a few bits and bobs. You'll have some double height clip which look like this. So we're going to remove, just going to take the green backing off these, and pop one in the middle. And then we're going to pop another one alongside it. Just in the middle there. And then also in the accessory pack you have your T-bar. So again remove the backing. The backing tape from that. And just press down firmly on the, uh, on the top to get a good addition. So I'm going to route the incline now. So to route the incline you're actually coming, uh, let me just think about this. Yeah, so you're coming in from the bottom. So you're going to route the incline. I'll explain in a minute. I'm just going to pop the teeth in, pop it through the teeth. So you're actually coming in from the bottom, nice straight loop, no twists, kinks or turns and you're straight round this side so that the loop goes down inside the printer when the print head moves like this. So I'm going to push it all the way back so it's at the back of the teeth and then manually slide the head all the way over to the left hand side and then back over to the right hand side. Now if your head won't move and it's locked into place what I would recommend you do is you unplug your printer to do this, that's perfectly fine. And you can see when I'm over here on the left, it's, it's got quite a big loop. I don't need all this excess, just move this camera around. Don't need all this excess slack here, so I'm going to take some of it away. All the way back over to the right. Back over to the left. and park it over there on the right hand side. Also within your accessory pack you've got some some bent clamps which look like this so again remove the green backing tape from these and these will get affixed. Still has the wrapper on because it is literally straight out of the box this. One over here 
and then one on the opposite side. The purpose of these is to rest the the clamp down. So this one here, we've not quite bent it. Let's just move that camera. We've not quite bent this one enough, so I'm just going to hold on to that, bend the clamp a little, just so that the lid can rest on that. Now, the reason for that is to give the. You can see when when you manually slide it, you get this loop that comes up over here. It's basically to give the incline some room to move. Now, if your loop is really big you'll get a you'll get a tapping noise on the lid and this might flick up so this is the reason why I've uh, shortened the size of the loop inside the printer so we're finished for that bit now so I'm going to click on replace the ink cartridge now before I do that for the reservoir I'm going to remove the small flat plugs because it's going to want to start charging and cleaning straight away so I'm just going to remove that and then pop it down, pop it down there on the side for now. I'll come back to that in a minute. So the ink cartridge closed the printer cover. So at the moment, it knows that the printer lid is open. Now, when you've removed your small flat plugs, the ones we've just removed from the ink system, you're actually going to put one in over here on the left-hand side. So you're just going to pop one. In there. And what that's going to do is it's going to trick the printer into thinking that the lid is closed. So it says ink cartridge not recognised, which is perfectly normal. Open the printer cover. So on the first time install, it will say they are not recognised. So. In all we're going to do is we're going to press the button on the chip for five seconds. Four, three, two, one, and we're done. Pop the printer lid plug back in. And what it should do, fingers crossed now, it should start charging and aligning the cartridges. So it's preparing the ink system, it's accepted the cartridges, it's recognised them, it thinks it's had a new set of cartridges in, which technically it has. It's now going to do uh, a cleaning, alignment and uh, run through its systems checks uh, and then we should be able, able to run some prints off. So as you can see it's really straightforward on this model, I mean we're not quite finished yet but it's literally like 8 minutes in and we're, we're nearly done now and um, that's how it will sit and run. So back to the reservoir, so with it being uh, quite a tall printer on this one, it's got uh, two paper trays, it's necessary to raise the system a little bit, so we're just going to put it on the perspex stand, so we have provided uh, a perspex stand, so we'll tidy this incline up in a minute, so we do recommend that you put it on this, if it's, if it's any lower, the ink will struggle to get to be pumped that far up, so we do recommend you must put it on this stand. With a new accessory pack, you're going to have these little filters, which look like this. These should be installed with the narrow pointed end facing upwards. This will allow the system to breathe. And we're just going to pop it over here on the right hand side. You could configure the, the routing of your cable to come over on the left if you don't have room. With a new accessory pack, you've got maybe one or two of these, a spare clamp. I'm just going to remove the backing tape and we're going to use this to tidy the incline up. Now it doesn't really matter where you tidy the incline up, you can come come around here the side of the clamp or you can, if you don't like that, you can attach it around here at the side. I don't think I've ever come here, I mean you can, to be honest you can put it pretty much wherever you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to put it on here this time, I don't think I've ever put it on here in, in a video. So this, First time for everything. I may regret this. So yeah, it looks pretty ugly that actually. Yeah, I don't like that. 
So I think what we'll do is I'll probably move it to be honest. As I say, this is straight out of the box. So I've basically uh, not uh, not even thought about how to fit this system. I knew it was similar to another model, but it was just right. Okay, let's just get it out of the box, get it done. Uh, so I'm pretty much off the cuff here uh, with coming up with a suitable method. I mean, I know how they work and and how they function, but the fit methods vary. So yeah, I probably per prefer that. To be honest, just over here on the right hand side, looks a bit prettier. I mean, you can't, I mean, to be honest, you can come over here, uh, you can come over here at the back if you want. You can pretty much route it any way you want as long as it doesn't interfere with the print head. Uh, but yeah, that, that still looks pretty ugly. I'm gonna come over the front here, so at least I'm okay. It's a bit better. It's not. It's really not that important how you read that cable, as long as it's it's uh, attached and not interfering. So it's still running through. Uh, it's probably got a couple of minutes left, and then we'll just run a few prints off. Uh, and that's it. We're about done. To be honest, it's really straightforward on this model. It's very similar to the 7110 DTW, which this printer uh, has replaced. Yeah, I am still here. Yeah, it's uh, it's still preparing the ink system. I know it does its nozzle checks and cleans and that. I don't actually know what else it does. It seems to almost go to sleep sometimes. Okay, so we're done. Ink cartridge replacement is done. And let's just into settings. No. No. Maintenance, print nozzle check. Very first print, no head cleans at all, which is quite rare to be honest. Uh, we have a perfect nozzle check on the very first print. So quite happy with that. What I'm just going to do now, just so you can see how it's how it runs, uh, how it's going to work for you. Clean the print head. No, don't want to do that. Right. Okay. So I'm just going to send a couple of photos to it. Just bear with me. It does not match the plain paper here, that's okay. Tidy that up. Probably shouldn't have chose high quality on these images. It's uh, it's going to take a few minutes to run off now. I'll let it run one off. Now you can see now uh, why we have the clamps here. We have the clamps over here and here, and the lid slightly ajar. It's basically, if you see the incline routing. So if I close it anymore, what can happen is that the uh, 
the incline it can start getting trapped and tangled inside because it doesn't have the room to move. So this is just the right height, these clamps, just to keep it slightly ajar to give us freedom of movement. And that's it, we're done. So I'm just going to let, let this print run, uh, run out uh, and finish itself off. Uh, and I'll show you that one just so you can see the print quality. And then we're finished. So this is actually really simple, this one. So I do recommend that you, uh, that you do watch our other video regarding the resetting of the chip. So uh, the reason for that is that the new range of Epson printers, uh, certainly for now for the chips on the market, when the printer is powered off and back on, it thinks it's had a new set of cartridges and will want to run through a clean, a clean and an alignment check every time. So for that reason, we recommend that you keep the printer switched on. But if you've switched it off and you're watching this video and it's not recognised, and you, you, that's basically why it's because it, it's had a new set of cartridges. So you have to go through that process. It's not normally this slow, this printer. They are quite quick printers, uh, but basically I have chose uh, Epson matte paper as a setting and then a higher quality uh, printout which is gonna it's gonna take four or five minutes to run a print through normally. I don't know how long this one has actually been going for. Feels like five minutes. And that's it, we're done. Uh, that's how you install the continuous ink system on the Epson Workforce WF7210 from City Ink Express. Thank you.